All right. So hello, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of the Adventures of Successful Founders, uh, powered by Startup Epiphany, a series of interviews with successful entrepreneurs from which we can all learn some of their secrets to their sac uh, company success and learn their founder story. I'm Giuseppe Randolfo. I'm the founder at the Startup Epiphany, a revolutionary video sharing social media platform in a mission of ensuring that founders and early stage innovators are well equipped to solve the world's biggest challenges and launch their startup idea. My guest for today, joining by Zoom, is Saad Jamal, 20 years old and already founder at uh, Seritech Solutions. Thanks for joining me, Saad. Thank you so much, Jasper. It's a really nice introduction. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, first come first, maybe can you give us the elevator pitch, uh, the description of Seri Tech Solutions? Sure. So at Seri, we are trying to create an ecosystem for education. As you may all of know that each and every learner has a different learning pattern. Every teacher has a different teaching methodology. And we can't expect just one product to take care of everything. So we are creating an uh, ecosystem for education. We break it down into two components. First one is an operating system from where educational institutions and users can do all of their core operations like online learning, team management, et cetera. And then there's a, it's coupled with a marketplace from where they can install mini apps and plugins to complement their learning and make the experience very personalized to them. Okay, so, so, sounds very cool. <laughs> So, um, so who you. are who are your um, uh, your actual um, customers, potential customer, or if so, you really have customers, who, who are they? All right. So I I like to answer that in uh, two ways. So first one is uh, the ultimate product we want to build. So we believe that each and every learner and each and every educator can be a potential customer. But as of now, we are very focused on a specific target of early adopters, which we find as uh, CBSC schools in India who have more than 1,000 students and who are in metro cities because we have chosen these very carefully because these are the people who need a product the most and who can also afford to pay for the product, which is also uh, very important for us. Of course. Of course. M makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then uh, what about uh, uh, the origin of your company? How did you get this bus business idea? Uh, and wh when did you think that, uh, you know, oh, uh, hey, wait, th this business, uh, this business idea has some potential. L let me try to, to uh, make something out of it. All right. So uh, firstly, I can't uh, just say a single day uh, when I thought that this could be a great idea. So actually, the first time the basic idea we started was on 26 July uh, last year. So. Mm -hmm. Back then, actually, I belonged to a family of educators. A lot of my family is into teaching. So I was helping my uncle uh, choose a software for his school. So we were reviewing and demoing a lot of products from where he can manage his uh, school operations. But uh, surprisingly, for the very first time, I wanted something which I couldn't find online. Mm -hmm. So that was really, I was really curious. And I did a market research and I realized that there are some companies, but most of them have very uh, clunky dashboards which uh, you, you can't even imagine how uh, first worldly they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were some US-based companies like uh, Schoology mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Moodle and Blackboard, but they are actually really expensive for an uh, Indian educator and too complicated for the first time teachers. So we decided that probably we can do something about it. So the original idea we started with was to create an intuitive LMS, but as then we uh, did market research, which is again a very interesting process. So the idea kept evolving and we also realized that there's a bigger problem that what we are solving. The bigger problem seems to be that you may have also noticed that in the uh, last couple of years, mm -hmm. there had been a really good surge in number of edutech startups coming in. Mm -hmm. All these edutech startups have uh, really uh, cool technologies to sell to the market, which can actually revolutionize the education system. But if you realize each and every user have a certain bandwidth, they don't have enough budgets and they don't have enough time to spend on so many products. Mm -hmm. So it ultimately ends up increasing the cost of customer acquisition for these startups. And as it happens, the prices go up and it makes it unaffordable for the 
mm-hmm. uh, lower class schools who don't have a uh, budgets so this is creating a vicious cycle so we thought maybe if we can help these uh, startups to reach the schools and the students base we would be having then it could actually lower down their cacs and because all of this is integrated in a single uh, ecosystem so it is also easier for schools to use all these products and to keep everything in sync so that is the ultimate vision right now that we are working on okay wow okay um but uh, are you thinking uh, this applies uh, in india uh, but also will apply also to other countries in the next years yes i sure so we have uh, plans of going global mm-hmm. actually uh, just uh, in last couple of months we have also raised our funds mm-hmm. so our uh, founding investor is uh, mr unitan sir mm-hmm. he is a harvard business school alumni who is a serial entrepreneur and stays in singapore and malaysia so mm-hmm. with his help we are planning to expand once we have captured a significant market share in india then we are planning to capture and go to uh, southeast markets and then you usa and uk i mean it would come gradually in phases but we have plans okay sounds great now can i ask you instead a question about the challenges that you that you faced so which are, which were and which are actually the biggest challenges that you that you are facing uh, to become a founder and to launch your, your startup actually there is uh, not uh, there's not a single challenge which i can point out which is the biggest challenge the biggest challenge is to keep track of all these challenges and if you may realize that startups uh, there are a lot of moving parts Mm-hmm. and each of each and every part is really important if i uh, mess up on legal terms then i can uh, get a lawsuit against me if i mess up on product then this i mean i can't really mess up on product i can mess up on marketing so we the most important challenge is to keep everything moving in sync mm-hmm. and to keep hiring people who are better and smarter than you and keeping them motivated to work with you and the challenge just amplifies because we as a startup you always have capital constraints even if you have raised funds i mean uh, it's not in billions or millions of dollars no so when you're starting up uh, it's always difficult to hire people who are actually top notch because you only can attract people who are attracted by vision and sometimes even those people who even love to join you can't because even if they love to join you they have a family to take care of absolutely so resources i believe are a good constraint and then another constraint is uh, cultivating leadership in the teams Because there are a lot of people who are great as individual contributors, but more than often in an early stage startup, you need a culture of leadership because you want these people to be leading your teams in upcoming years. You just can't hire a next person who who is a senior manager some other position and involved in your team and expect them to lead your team. Yeah. So I always prefer to promote within the teams. So building a leadership mindset is a really difficult thing which we uh, which we face. Okay. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It, it's unbelievable, you know, we are located in uh, we are located in, in Italy actually. We are located so in another part of the world, but I think that uh, you, what you mentioned are the same uh, challenges that uh, that we are facing also as a startup. So mm-hmm. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um all right. Um so now um Let, let if you have to if you if you um have a chance to give like three tips three advices to other uh, to other aspiring entrepreneurs aspiring founders what they uh, what they would be okay so first i have to think about uh, what those three advices could be the first and foremost would be to focus i mean uh, when i say focus i just don't mean that uh, you do one thing at a time i also mean that you identify where you want to focus so before you focus you first have to go a way of exploration you have to explore what all is there find and decide what is good for you and then focus and i mean it in terms of target market like even in our case we can go to each and every learner and each and every educator but you may know that each and every learner and educator there are different users a user who is uh, in a rural area in india is very different from a tech savvy user in us so which user do you want to reach out to 
which user would have the least uh, customer acquisition cost the user who, who would be willing to use a product the most the user who can pay you so you have to decide and first you have to explore what all kinds of markets i can explore and then you have to focus on the markets which you think can give you the highest returns on the minimal efforts and once you have captured the low hanging fruits then you gradually start moving upwards and i'm sharing this because i uh, initially when i meet a lot of founders so they are just trying to capture the entire market i mean they just uh, look at each and every user from a lens of users and data but you have to understand that each and every one of the user mm. is a human being so you have to classify them based on their demographics based on their behavioral ins- insights and then you have to uh, look after them and then you have to target your market uh, your marketing activities you have to target your sales pitch as per them like this is what appeals to this what may uh, what may be appealing to a american customer can be you know a cultural uh, problem for a chinese customer he may be offended by the same pitch so you have to focus and decide and then you have to craft and uh, plan your business as per that focus group second would be about hiring a uh, second tip i very strongly believe that uh, you or me we can't create companies alone we always need a team so as founders i believe it's our duty and it's a foremost responsibility to build a culture and then people will take it forward from there and build a company so at seri we are very very stringent about who we uh, let into the team so there's a very stringent hiring process we make sure that the person is a great culture fit and we also make sure that uh, he's a technical fit and only then people are allowed and uh, although we uh, were very much encouraging of making mistakes but uh, if there's someone uh, who is making ethical mistakes like uh, dishonesty or untruthfulness then very brutal so uh, we also uh, fire very brutally so i mean it's your team so if you ensure that the first 10 people in your team are really a plus people then they will ensure that the next hires in their teams are also a plus a plus people only want to work with a plus people they don't tolerate b people so if you set a good foundation of your team and culture then the rest of the culture and rest of the team follows and that's how i build you uh, build a great company so you have to set the foundation right wow yeah That, that that's also inspiring for me okay <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> moving to the third <laughs> third okay so third is uh, whenever you go online you meet uh, and you watch lectures of uh, senior entrepreneurs great entrepreneurs they are always talking about uh, how should you think about long term mm. but uh, when you are actually a very early stage startup i believe it's all about balance you can't just think long term you can't just always think about the long term culture and benefits in early stages the most critical milestone to achieve is survival so you also have to make sure that you are live another day to fight you just really can't focus all of things on the long term like you can't just uh, hire someone who is a great potential because you think that you can nurture him and over the years he'll become a great person sometimes you have to let them go because you need someone who can work right now even if he is uh, not a great person you have to let go of a great talent because you can't afford to nurse your talent very early on i mean it's just example there are a lot of ways uh, where entrepreneurs uh, especially early stage entrepreneurs try to take big decisions like this will pay off in the long term but then they don't survive long enough so it's important to survive firstly if you are an early stage entrepreneur okay uh, great great tips great tips thank you okay. Uh, now I have a question instead about uh, the, the, the next steps of uh, Seri Technologies. Uh, so, what is your next step? So, as we've already discussed, so as of now we are uh, planning to do pilots with the uh, edu- higher education institutions in India, mm-hmm. and uh, there are some schools we are trying to pilot with. So, as soon as the pilots are done, the uh, main purpose of pilots is uh, let me. Uh, d- first of all let me cl- uh, uh, clear clarify that earth is a b2b product in case if you have a b2c product uh, the iteration cycles are uh, quite frequent you build a product you release into the market you get few users you talk to them you get feedback and then iterate over it mm-hmm. but in case of a b2b product there's an organization who is using a product 
and on behalf of that organization they are that organizations uh employees and in our case it's a institution so mm -hmm. teachers and professors and students would be using so if there's any bugs which come so they don't uh talk to us they talk to the institution like what crap have you sold us so <laughs> we also have to make sure that the product is uh, not just an mvp but mvp plus one okay so for that purpose you need to do pilot projects with institutions uh, mm -hmm. we do co-building programs so that we make sure that what we are building is what they need and it works like them and once we are completely satisfied that these people love the product uh, there are no demands from their side they are just uh, very happy with it then we try to uh, grow and scale from upwards there so next times are in that phase only so as of now our initial uh, road map for first few months is to focus more on the product and try to build a, a pre launch customer base so that when we are ready to launch we have some people it's not just like uh, the today i have done my product and tomorrow i'll start looking for customers yeah. you have to build a distribution alongside yeah and uh, once we have a good foothold in india then we'll try to expand in uh, southeast asia then us and uk i mean this is for upcoming years okay and ultimately we want to uh, be something like apple for education like we also uh, prefer to have our Actually, uh, uh, I'd like to venture into uh, consumer electronics in the next five to uh, four to five years. Like mm -hmm. we, as of now, we are a completely a software company. But uh, in like in next three to five years, whenever it's possible, it's a really, uh, really ambitious goal. We also want to go into hardware. Like Sid is also building the devices, and we are also building the software, like mm -hmm. a Apple model. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully, also you, you, your technology will come also to Italy at a certain point. <laughs> yes, yes, we are really hoping so. <laughs> okay, well, Sad, thank you very, very much for all this great information and for sharing with us some of your uh, tips and advices. Um, so, thank you very much for your time. T for today, this is all. Um, so. Thank you for watching uh, another episode of The Adventures of Successful Startups. And uh, I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.